there's teams across the league that have a good case to be a favorite when it comes down to a finals run and although the Orlando Magic aren't considered a front runner, a playoff appearance after being absent for some years will be huge. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a series where we dive deep into a certain aspect of a team, valuable things certain players bring to the squad, and why a certain team can be a threat in the playoffs for whoever faces them. We'll be covering the most intriguing teams in playoff contention and also teams per your request. So without further ado, let's get into this young, vibrant squad in the Orlando Magic. The Orlando Magic have a lot of potential, and when I say a lot, I truly mean it. Right now, they're sitting at the fourth seed in the Eastern Conference, and if you were to tell people at the beginning of the year that this is where they would be, most would probably laugh at you. If you were to turn on your TV on any given night and actually tune in, you would notice all the bright players they have on this team and how well they use their personnel. If a guard gets beat to the rim, well, there's nothing for Jonathan Isaac to slide over and decimate the shot. If you need someone to get the crowd going, well that's where you have Jalen Suggs come in and make a huge defensive play that then translates into easy offense. And let's say you need someone to look to who isn't afraid of the moment, well that's where you have Paolo Bancaro, who for better or worse, will take on the challenge. Now I already know the first gripe that many people are going to have, and that's that they are too young and inexperienced and the playoffs will expose them. And hey, although some of that might be true, in today's league we're seeing a lot of young talents break out left and right, and if the Magic haven't been on your radar, well they are certainly going to be now. When looking at the roster, the Magic have a core big three in my eyes with Paolo Bancaro, Franz Wagner, and Jonathan Isaac, and with some dogs to uplift them as well, you have Cole Anthony, Jalen Suggs, and even Mo Wagner brings that energy too. Now there are some other guys that provide a lot of value when they step on the court as well, so don't yell at me in the comments. Instead, comment down below what guys you think will be bright for this team going forward. As the playoffs are right around the corner, after all-star break is when you see some teams start to really pick up the intensity, and when looking at Orlando, they have certainly done just that. Going 16-8 and eight over this span, the Magic are top 10 in true shooting percentage, net rating, and for the brightest sign, they're number 2 in defensive rating at 107.2. So yeah, to say they are a sleeper team would be correct, because for a team playing this good and still not getting a lot of media coverage is insane. Is it because they're too young, small market team, not heavily experienced? If you ask me, I don't really know. But when you see the flexibility this team has with all of its cohesive combinations, it can stir up some fun come playoff time. You can't afford to fall asleep at any time with this team, because with many guys fired up to step on the court, if you leave one open, well it's straight cash. If I had to describe the Magic in one play, it would be here versus the Heat where they missed the first shot, hustle to get the tip to secure another possession, and then lock and load from deep to knock it down. Good thing I don't have to describe it in one play though, because you can see another glimpse of their identity when this inbounds almost turns into a turnover, they can use the ball movement to find the open man, and it's another one for the money. Basically, the Magic can make something out of nothing at any time, and they have major belief in the next man. When you have many different guys who can provide different skill sets on the floor, that's when your offense has a ton of flexibility with the things you can do, making you much harder to guard. When guards push the ball up the floor quickly, it'll put tons of pressure on the defense, so when you have a big who isn't afraid to shoot that three ball, it makes for a long night. Not only does having a big that can shoot threes help because this league is propelled by three-point shooting, it's also nice to have a vet who specializes in long-range sniping. Transition game is one thing, but when they're operating in that half court, the options are still endless. Because while some of their bigs can space the floor, the pick and roll game is smooth as well and these guys have such a great feel for each other on the court. When coming off the screen, Franz has the ability to lob this over the top, but that gives Bam a chance at getting a hand on the ball and it makes for window to have to get in the air to slam it, so by threading this bounce pass down the middle around the defense, it's perfectly on time with Wendell so he can slam it right in. Now don't think I was taking a shot at Wendell about him getting in the air to slam it, because if needed, Wendell will call for that lob and go up high to yam it through the traffic. When you have guys who can slice to the rim effectively, it'll pull defenders towards them, so when the big gets the slightest opening on the backside, it's a simple one-two connection. Take Franz for an example. Since he connects on 53% of his attempts off the drive, when he bends his corner around Durant quickly, it makes the help defender shift over to take away the drive in close, and now that brother-to-brother -brother bond is upon us. But hey, don't forget what I just said not long ago. Their bigs can space out as well, so when left open, the brother-to-brother -brother connection can result in a three ball. It makes it hard for other teams to guard this when your guys can do multiple things because with the defense having to run out to Isaac on the three, it allows him to blow right past getting downhill and now the drop off to Wagner is seamless. Looking at Jonathan Isaac, he himself can space the floor and knock down a three with no hesitation. He can time his cuts back door to receive the pass for the dunk. And when he needs to create space for that jumper, he can snatch back with that crossover and the midi is money. 
All of these offensive skills he has is simply amazing, but the real upside to his game as we all know is his defensive value. With Isaac, he can move his feet well on the perimeter to make it hard for guys to score on him, and then when you get in that paint with him, well it's pretty much a nightmare. When Paul George comes off this handoff screen, he thinks he got away from Isaac and has a path to the basket, but man, Jonathan the Enforcer totally obliterated this attempt in close. His recovery when navigating around screens is amazing as you can see him go under Scotty Barnes instead of fighting over it and from out of nowhere he sends OG shot flying. This high level of defense is extremely valuable because it'll help the Magic stop high flyers and routes to the rim. He can deter the drop to the basket to then recover back and still block his man's shot. And with his length, when he initiates that double with the teammate, it's hard to get a clean pass around him, so that's when you see Bancaro be able to anticipate the pass, get a hand on it, and then get a dunk going the other way. There's a saying out there that I think everybody knows, and it's defense wins championships. And trust me, this team has some major intensity defensively. Now, am I saying that they're the best defensive team and can all out run teams out of town? Nah, let's not get all carried away. But they certainly have some dogs on their team who can turn it up a notch. I mean, you tell me, how many guards are on the league are battling down low with someone much bigger than them and then use that swim move to get around to the front to poke the ball away? Yeah, not many have a motor like Suggs, so when he misses one opportunity to steal it, his confidence isn't shot, so he'll still hustle hard to break up the play down low, resulting in a steal. You must stay on your A game and not be lazy when Suggs is guarding you because he'll be quick to anticipate the pass to pick it off and now when he starts putting the pressure on the defense in the open floor, he can find Franz running down the court for the lay-in off the glass. This defensive pressure is something every team would want from a player because it doesn't matter who you match him up with as he's going to work hard every time, making it difficult for the opposing team to score on him. And don't get me started, if he gets into those situations where it's a battle for the ball, well that's where that dog comes out and shows OG who really runs the yard. These things right here are key for a team that is up and coming and showing the league that they mean business and when you have two other guys who are top 50 players in the league, it complements them very well. If you live under a rock and don't know those two guys on the Magic that are top 50 players, well I'm talking about Franz Wagner and Paolo Bancaro. When you look at Franz Wagner, he doesn't get all the media hype he deserves, but trust me, he could definitely have a legitimate argument of being the best player on this team at times. With his quirky play style, it's hard for defenders to predict where Franz is going, so this opens up many lanes for him and off these attack angles, now Wagner can decide if he wants to set up a teammate or coast him for the bucket inside. It's not very often you see a player that is 6'10 and only 22 years old move on the court with such a natural feel that it honestly makes you think he's been in the league much longer. This is such a great base to build off for Franz and so far the Magic have done well putting him in positions to showcase not only his talent but his leadership skills on the floor as well. Dishing out 3 assists per game, it might seem like a low number and really not that impressive but when watching Wagner navigate on the court you can see that he notices plays developing before they even happen. During the duration of his career, he's been one of the best floor generals for this team making the right plays offensively, but you know me, I'ma be honest and still say that the point guard position is where the Magic need to focus on finding quote unquote the one. But hey, his passing skills tend to go under the radar as most don't discuss this aspect of his game, but his ability to set up his teammates for great looks at the basket is and will be needed. This skill gives the Magic a player who can not only score the ball, but someone who isn't one dimensional so if the rim has a lid on it, he can take that backseat approach and set up easy buckets for the squad. But let's say that the buckets are falling and Franz is in his zone, well this is when we all get to see the true potential of Wagner. When you see how well he can carve out a lane for himself when driving to the basket, you'll for sure sit up in your seat a little as he does so in such an unconventional way. The unique approach to his inside scoring makes him difficult to cover when en route to the basket and once presented with an opening to take off, his touch around the rim is fairly decent. Having a very keen slasher like this is a need for any team because let's be honest, a bucket from in close is far more reliable than a bucket from the outside unless your name is Stephen Curry. With Franz, he's showing bright signs of being a dependable slashing threat for this team and although he's having a down year on his 3 point shot, he still isn't afraid to let it fly. For the Magic, he's truly a diamond in the rough and what's great is that he isn't the only diamond they have as Paolo Bancaro is the other diamond that's emerging quickly. We all know that Paolo didn't get much coverage his rookie year and in his second year you can hear talks in the media about him not being as good as some people think but as real Who fans we must give credit where credit is due and acknowledge the promising play from Bancaro. Listen, I don't care if people want to get mad about it but I made a full video a while ago over Bancaro and I stated that he reminds me of LeBron when he first stepped on the scene. The reason I say such thing is because Paolo can affect the game in every way on the court and his presence is heavily felt when he is out there. 
When you're watching the Magic game, you can sometimes forget he's only in his second year simply because how comfortable and fearless he looks. Whether it's a bucket from the inside, creating looks for himself, assisting the open man to spread the wealth, and then when we switch sides of the ball, you can see signs of Paolo being a solid defender around the rim. Of course, there are those times where we can see flaws in his game, but from a holistic standpoint, Bancaro's skill set is not one that comes around often. There's so many factors that play into why Bancaro is so talented, and with the pieces the Magic have, this team is built to shake up the league as long as they work out some of their kinks, and this year's playoffs will be a huge test and awakening to see how this Magic team performs under bright lights.